In this final lesson of the introductory look at Maya fluid containers, let's take a look at the emitter itself. So let's go ahead and create a 2D container with emitter. And I'll go ahead and just set this to 500 frames. And let's just move this down a bit. All right. By selecting the emitter, let's just hit play. Make sure we got fluids coming out. Yep. By selecting the emitter, you'll notice that in your attribute editor, you'll have a few extra tabs here that we'll look at. The first one is the emitter attributes. So is it an omni surface curve? So if you have an object, it'd be surface. If you have a curve in here, it'd be curve. And we'll talk about volume in just a second. Cycle emissions and your minimum and maximum distance. We're going to really focus on this minimum and maximum distance because right now it's a minimum of zero, meaning the particle comes from here. If I set this to something like um, 0.6, notice how the particle started 0.6 units away. So we'll just make this bigger so you can kind of see what this looks like. Not too big. There you go. You can kind of faintly make that out right there. So depending on what kind of effect you want, this would be a great way to control that. I usually keep it at default unless there's something special I'm trying to do. Now let's come down here to our fluid attributes. This is where you can control the actual amount of fluid coming out of that emitter. All this time we've been adjusting the actual container itself. So if I want to double the amount of density that this emitter is shooting out, I just hit set this to 2 and you can see how much that's changed. If I set this to 6, you'll really see it. There you go. The same with the heat and fuel. You also have a fluid drop off. Now if I set this to 0, watch what happens. See how it's coming in right here? However, if I set this really high, you see how the fluid area here drops off very quickly. So this is, again, right at the emitter. Default for this is 2. Now, we've already talked about emitting fluid color. But again, if I turn that on, I'm going to have to set my um, color method to dynamic grid. And from here, I can pick my own color of whatever I want. Okay. And then down below, we have a turbulence section. Now, this is the turbulence generated at the emitter. So currently, it's a gradient, which is essentially saying it's a nice, smooth fall off. Uh, if I crank up this turbulence, you can see what happens here, how right here, how much noise is introduced and the way that that noise is affecting how those particles are being generated. If I change this to random, I get really just a random scale. You, you, it's hard to control what's happening. So again, you have your speed of randomness that you have as a control, and then as well as your frequency and your offset. Now your detail turbulence, be careful as you crank this up, it starts to affect your render a little bit because it's again adding a multiplier to that detail. All right, the last area that I want to talk to you about is, let's just turn down this turbulence, is this volume. Now by default it's turned off. However, if I come back up to the top and I go to the emitter type, change it from omni to volume, you'll now notice that I actually have a cube in here. Now the cube is the default shape and with that cube you can actually scale it out and so I can, let's say if I wanted to have particles generated from the bottom here, I can move this into position like this and say okay this is going to be where my fire or whatever particle system gets emitted from. However, if I hit play, they still emit like, like just a regular emitter. I just got a, a wider base that I'm coming out of. Well, a lot of people would say, all right, well, let's just change this to something like a sphere. Well, let's see if that fixes it. A mm, little bit, but not really. We just tighten it up a little bit. So you have sphere, torus, a cone. You can choose uh, uh, cylinders. You have lots of choices here. What I'm going to do is leave it at cone, okay? And back up here where it says fluid drop off, remember, we're dropping off two units. So if you go out two units, it's gone. And so if I change this to something like, let's say, three and a half units, right, see how fast it faded out? But what if I take this down to zero? Now watch what happens. Perfect. 
Now I've got a tremendous amount of noise and turbulence happening here, so I'm going to just set this to zero and set our gradient on. There we go. So what else can we do here? Well, I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments to my container just so you can see some of this, what's happening a little bit easier. We're going to go in and add a little bit of viscosity and a little bit of friction. Okay, let's see how that plays back. All right, very cool. We'll go ahead and come down to our turbulence. Go ahead and set that to zero, speed to zero. All right, very good. Under our uh, dissipation, let's go ahead and add a little bit of dissipation to this simulation. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. We're going to add just a little bit more friction, just so it's a little stickier. All right. So you can see, just by a few tweaks here, how well we can control this simulation. I'm going to go ahead and set my density scale to 1. That way it matches that density that we were doing. I'm going to lower my buoyancy just a bit. And let's see what we get here. Very cool. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and turn off both sides. I'm going to just turn that off. And that way, the initials, there we go. And so that's a lot of particles coming out. We can go ahead and slow these guys down just a bit. There we go. And if you want, you can go ahead and add opacity to this. Remember, we're going to always want to use grid. There we go. And, and you know, we can go in and adjust. It looks like our scale is really off. So we can adjust that as well. Let's see. Very cool. So, again, a lot of fun. You can do a lot of really cool things with just using the, the default emitter, emitter, but you could tweak it out and create some really cool effects by adjusting the actual emitter to things like volume or emitting from objects or curves. So, hopefully you learned a lot about Maya Fluid Containers. Again, this is just an introductory look. We have a great course on advanced fluids that will actually show you some great examples of how to implement this and create fire and different effects like that. So again, thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the course.